Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of announcing to you that we are going to make an effort to repeat the old revelation. One, two, Howdy. Welcome to this episode of Cimarron's Big Guns. We are honored to be here with Omar Pineda from Alfonso's of Hollywood. How are you doing, Bryce? Good, yes. thank you. How about yourself? Jamie, how are you? We, my dad started with my uncle back in the late 50s, in 58, 59. He was not known back then. Nobody knew who he was. So he had to make a, na a name for himself. And the way he went uh, doing that, he um, he did a lot. Of, he started doing a lot of props for the uh, local production companies, and as the word got around um, that Alfonso uh, would get things done, okay, meaning that uh, that as I as I was telling you off camera, that uh, my uncle, myself, being just a, a eight year old boy, uh, and my dad, we would work through the night just to get the things. Uh, all these. Uh, uh, props done because it would have to be used the following morning on, on a given show. So the word got around and before you know it, uh, uh, the bigger production companies called uh, uh, Universal, Desilu, um, uh, Republic, uh, there were a lot of uh, Western filmmaking uh, uh, that, were, that were being done at the time and so we were very busy. We were very busy making gun belts as you see in the background. A lot of gun belts for the different TV shows such as Gun Smoke, Have Gun Will Travel. There on that corner you see a, a reproduction of the Have Gun Will Travel rig. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I had an opportunity to meet a, a lot of uh, um, movie stars. For example, I met uh, as a kid Eastwood when he wasn't very well known. You know, and to me. He was this towering figure, you know, he was a very tall man and, and, and very, very quiet man, you know, very, very uh, easy going. Uh, I, I say that because uh, uh, some of these uh, folks that I met over the years were not as easy going. <laughs> this, uh, this area here doubles as a, both a warehouse and a workshop. We, we try to keep uh, enough belts and gun belts in hand because we had uh, many requests from different uh, dealers, mm -hmm. um, gunsmiths, studios. I, I got started very, very little, very young. I was about eight years old when I got started. Uh, I wasn't old enough to sew, so I, I was not allowed to sew. I was not allowed to cut. So basically I, I started by dyeing leather. That was my very first uh, step dyeing leather in, in the different colors that we used to uh, offer. And then I learned to assemble, assemble. How long have you been working here? I don't know, about 35 years. Wow. <laughs> there's, there's two other craft uh, men that work here, but they're on vacation right now. Oh. How long is the training process? That's a good question, Jamie, but uh, years. Yeah. It's, it's this is our cutting section. We, uh, we do a lot of custom work, as I'm sure you know. And for custom orders that are uh, unique or different, or something that we have to design from scratch, uh, those we uh, it's a it's a three-step process where we'll work we'll, we'll make a template a template um, usually made out of heavy-duty craft paper like this mm -hmm. okay. uh, that would be the first step 
on our production stuff, our stuff that we do on a regular basis, we have steel dies. Steel dies. These are steel forged dies, as, as you can see. Mm. These are our hydraulic presses, hydraulic clickers. These are used in the industry for cutting purposes. Mm -hmm. So how long from start to finish does it take to make like what Bryce got from you? If we were just to do that, pro that project and we had nothing else uh, to do, um, we, can, we can complete that gun belt within a week. These are some of the guys that we have for the different holsters and again these are for items that we make here. Uh, on a regular basis. Again, these are, are steel forged uh, dies. This section we have um, some of the leathers, the, the various types of leather that we use. Uh, some softer leather, such as this. Uh, this is good material for vest, chaps, uh, items like that. And then we have uh, the heavier leather, which is this type of leather, commonly known as a veg tan or vegetable tan leather. And, and this is the material that we use the most. Yeah. Because that's, that's what, uh, and, and not only ourselves, but most of the industry uses this type of leather as well. <laughs> what, what is the most expensive belt you have made? Uh... Like I read that at one point you you may have made like a thirty thousand dollar one with like diamonds and yes, you for someone in a parade. Uh, <laughs> yes, those are um, uh, those are show show type of rakes. Uh, they're studded with uh, uh, silver and gold. Uh, we call them conchos. Other folks call them studs. Uh, they're still very very popular. That's why we still continue to make them. Uh, it is a niched market. Okay, uh, uh, but yes, there's enough people out there that uh, they l that love a, a, a beautiful show uh, rake because that's what they are. They're designed to show, you know, to show oh. guns and holsters. Yeah, guns and holsters. <laughs> they go together like like peanut butter and, and jelly and jelly, <laughs> fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Well, thank you for joining us. It was my pleasure. Thank you for coming and visiting with us. All right. And thank you all for watching at home. <laughs>